This is like little boy in a sweet shop. This is amazing. <laughs> this November, the UK will host COP26, bringing global leaders together to accelerate climate action. To support the event, Formula E are sending me on an electric road trip to Glasgow to immerse myself in stories of electric racing and electric vehicles, the renewable energy revolution, and much more. <laughs> Welcome to the EV Road Trip. Welcome to day three of the EV road trip. Last night we made it to Sunderland and today we're here at Nissan, the plant where the Nissan Leaf is made. One of the best selling EVs on the market, actually the first mass market EV all the way back in 2013. And today we are giving you exclusive access onto the production line to see how it's made and talk to the people that make it. As well as being a successful Formula E team, the manufacturer powering the team are one of the most successful EV makers in the business. And with big plans for the future, I'm interested to know how a global manufacturer like Nissan are planning to level up how they operate. But first, let's make the most of the access and get up close to see how an electric car is made and how smooth the transition to electrification is going. Cue global launch expert and Nissan Leaf maestro Les Greener to show us around the production line. This is like little boy in a sweet shop. This is amazing. <laughs> the leaf here has already got the cockpit module installed. You can see it all laying out. It's put in by the lovely lifter behind you, which is just purely, it's there and swaps between crash guy and leaf. Okay. So one, one car will be a crash guy, he'll pick the, pick the cockpit module up, the lads will pull in the car, and the next car will be the leaf. So here we're on engine dress. You can see a standard combustion engine. Basically, you've got the drive shafts, the actual motor itself. And then the next car will be an electric vehicle, so that's the Leaf power, power train. It's exactly the same, exactly the same process. Every one of these operators down here will either fit something to a combustion engine or they'll fit something to an electric engine. It's quite interesting to see the two together, purely just size. The engines itself, very much smaller, very easier to work on. The battery is the part that changes. Yeah. So between what you had as a 24 kilowatt to a 40 kilowatt, you can see the battery size increasing. So in terms of the, the way the, product, the plant works then, with combustion and electric, it, the electric doesn't really add in too many issues. It sort of rolls straight into the normal pr it's, process. It's of... a normal process of a car. Wow, okay. Right, well let's keep moving because I'm, I'm intrigued. So the battery's already installed in the car. You can see it underneath the car wall, the uh, undercover's already fitted on. Yeah. The axle and the uh, EPT is ready to be installed in the car. You have an operator on either side. Liam lift it to a certain height and then that'll feed inside the car. And that's it, that's the process done. Four bolts in and that's the process, that's the engine bin. So how many leaves can you make a day here? 17 an hour, one seven an hour at the moment. That's our capacity as a plant. But obviously that's if more investment, more investment all the time, that'll change. 17 Nissan leaves in an hour. Yeah. So, Wow. And this plant alone has, has made a, a significant contribution to the half a million that have been sold. Oh, yes, yes. If you talk about full length from basically a, a panel coming in, yeah, it takes about, if you add everything together, it'll probably take between about 12 hours from panels getting pressed, cars getting painted, all the way through. So when the work on the leaf started here in the production plant, what was the frequency? How many leaves were there for every combustion vehicle? Oh, one, in, one in 10 was uh, a good deal. And what's it now? Uh, one in three. I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? It does, it does. It, says, it tells you electricity is the future. The Nissan Sunderland plant is a titan of the auto industry in the Northeast. But with crucial carbon targets needed to be reached, industry has to play a huge role in making big business sustainable. Nissan are calling their response to this EV360. And luckily for us, plant manager Alan Johnson was on hand to tell us more. Get ready for some robots. So earlier this year, there was a big announcement of 360. Talk to us about that. What does that mean? EV360 is a, an EV hub. There's three parts to it that are all interrelated. First of all, you've got a new electric vehicle to be produced in the Sunderland plant. Secondly, you've got micro grid energy distribution system, 100% renewable energy. So that also will save us collectively, will save 55,000 tonnes of CO2 per year. The third part is our battery supplier have announced plans to construct a second gigafactory in IAMP and they'll be able to take advantage of the microgrid 
project as well as us. So what we want to do is take as little as we can from the grid and use as much of our own energy generated by ourselves, obviously clean, but not from the grid, mm -hmm. so that the energy in the grid can be used by other customers. Each of these in isolation is significant, but when you package them together in one joined up plan, it really is something special. So that leads me on to another question. So one of the discussion topics that often comes up when talking about electric vehicles is the end of life or second life of things like batteries. Can you give us an example of how Nissan are approaching that? We've got a project running now and what we're doing is we're using LEAF second life batteries to store the energy that we're generating. So it's a very nice, clean, clever package. You're ticking a lot of boxes, you know, you're using, reusing batteries, which is great of course, but you're optimising and maximising the renewable energy that we generate ourselves and minimising the amount that comes from the grid, so it's a really cool project. What do you think the future of road cars and the automotive industry looks like? I think you can see it already, there's clearly a migration towards EVs and it's very exciting. It's probably the biggest transition that the automotive industry will have seen in 100 years and we're part of it. So that was easily one of the coolest things I've ever done. So interesting to see how that all works. And particularly interesting to see how seamless the production line is working with combustion and electric vehicles and how they can make one after the other with no problem. So I guess for argument's sake, you could say, if for whatever reason, maybe what comes out of COP, there's an even bigger push to go electric sooner, quicker, faster. These guys are in a pretty good position to do that. Everything's already going there. Their future plans are already in full swing. And something else I noticed coming here is seeing the wind turbines, seeing the solar panels, it made me think that that's how big industry should be. It should be about being sustainable. It should be about creating your own energy mix and not draining from the, the grid or needing to use fossil fuels. And these guys are already doing a pretty good job of that and even more so in the future. And continuing with that theme of sustainability, in the next episode, we'll be going to learn about some environmental protection and going to one of the biggest renewable energy generation sites in the entire country.